Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. We have a picture of the pursuit. Sammy, hurry this up. He's going to kill somebody. We got him. We got him. They're down in the ditch. Just cut him up. Go away. Look around. He's wrecked. He's wrecked. No matter where you are, at any second, it could happen to you. Oh, man. We need some help. Because desperate criminals use desperate measures, no matter who gets in the way. For the next 60 minutes, you'll get a close-up view of what officers see every day. You'll ride shotgun in the most terrifying chases on the road. You'll feel the heat of the most explosive acts of criminal insanity ever captured on tape. Much of this footage has never been viewed by the public. Police and news agencies send us their most shocking videos. He's got a gun, he's got a gun. So that you can know what they know. That to let your guard down, even for an instant, Get in could mean disaster. He's gonna run the red light, he's gonna run it. So crank up your TV and don't turn away because real life happens in the blink of an eye. Shut your truck off. I'm Sheriff John Bunnell. For decades, the police helicopter has been the great equalizer against crime. But officers need more than the right equipment to nab a felon. They need to make the right moves at just the right time. So sit tight. We're going to show you how a split-second moment of decision can separate a bust from a getaway. National City, California, where a fugitive snakes his way through suburban street. He may have a clear road now, but he's destined to cause horror on the highway before this day is through. We're getting word now that the driver has outstanding warrants and a long history of violent crimes. His luxury car's powerful engine easily keeps its distance from the cruisers in pursuit. But no matter where he turns, he finds more police units waiting for him. Just blew by that motorcycle cop approaching another patrol car right through the red light. Oh, another close call. There are too many obstacles and officers on the street, so he takes his frantic run to the freeway. But even there, slower vehicles impede his path. Coming up on the 54 interchange, and now he's trying to pass on the right. Oh, no! OK, he just rammed that car there. That's now felony hit front. The line of patrol cars grows behind him, but the suspect hopes he can lose them all with just one drastic turn. He's making a left on, no, no, wait. He's going up and off ramp, and he's headed onto the freeway going the wrong way. Rounding a blind curve, stunned motorists have no time to prepare for what's raging toward them, head on. Even a highway patrol officer is taken off guard. As two freeways intersect, his slow lane becomes the center lane, but the fugitive makes no move for safer ground. Officers watch helplessly as the suspect shoots straight into the heart of traffic. This is unbelievable. He's heading right down the center lane, not slowing down. Other cars can barely react. Oh! Oh, did he just hit that car? Both vehicles miss the suspect by inches. The close calls shock some sense into the foolhardy fugitive. But by the time he learns from his mistake, it's too late. The breakdown lane disappears. Oncoming motorists have nowhere to go, except into the face of terror. No! He's back into the center lane! Car swerving! Car Whoa! He has just caused a rear-ender! The suspect's brushes with death scare him off the freeway and back onto surface street. But it's out of the frying pan and into the fire. Ground units are on him in an instant. The suspect knows that his only proven way of avoiding capture was an insane, terrifying ordeal. But the fact he survived the crazy stunt once makes him think he can survive it twice. Okay, he may be making a U turn. No, no, he's heading back onto the freeway, back into oncoming lane. But again, a few near collisions scares the maniac to the safety of surface streets and right into an officer's path. 
He couldn't elude police the second time, so he decides to try and cheat death a third time. He's picked up two more CHP units. Now he's going to, yes, back into head-on traffic. Officers forced to break off again. This has just got to be one of the most frustrating pursuits we've ever seen. Officers shadow him on the opposite side of the freeway. They're close enough to assist in case of an accident, but helpless to prevent one. Okay, I think he's had enough again. He's making his way back off the freeway. Officers scramble to keep him from getting back onto the freeway. The intersection ahead is blocked. There's an officer in ambush position. Oh! Just missed with the spike strips. This guy has been too lucky too long. But each little escape makes the suspect even bolder. Again, into head-on lanes. Very tight traffic this time. Coming up on a minivan. Oh! Just missed. Oh, man, that was very close. By now, the tricky fugitive has wormed through nearly every cloverleaf in the South Bay. Officers are forced to shut down entire freeways to keep the civilians safe. Okay, we'll pull out wider so you can see here the CHP has the southbound lanes completely stopped. It's like a parking lot down there. Now, now wait, he's turning around, flipping a U-turn in the middle of the freeway. But with the spider's web of interchanges to deal with, the officers can't possibly cover every direction. We'll be the 805. Okay, okay. Right. okay. Right. okay. Right. 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 When the menace returns to city streets, he finds no sympathy from the angered locals. Some pedestrians start hurling insults. Others hurl rocks. Wow, civilians are targeting this guy now. By his fifth attempt at the same old trick, the officers have dug in and prepared for him. On E Street again, he's been down this way several times already, and patrol cars ahead have the streets completely blocked off. He has to turn off here. At the end of the on-ramp, his accumulated acts of mayhem finally catch up with him. His left front tire blows from the strain. The car is crippled. He's stopping the car now. He may be giving up here. Nope, foot bail, foot bail. But he still won't give up. He's actually trying to outrun the CHP on foot. Like a snake in the grass, the fugitive slips into the dense roadside sagebrush. But when he heads back onto the pavement, it becomes a battle of two legs versus four wheels. Oh, CHP cut him off there, and this guy is not happy about it. The wrong way runner is forced to double back. And the officer drives him down the embankment. CHP following him back into the brush, and uh, it looks like he may be heading back down to his car. No, no, he's crossing the freeway. He's dodging traffic on foot. But each weary step takes him headlong into traffic. One stumble or one distracted driver could mean the end. Another close one. Now it looks like, wait, a car veering right for him. A passing motorist seizes the opportunity to take matters into his own hand. Unbelievable. He's just pulled up. Suspect is down. It looks like a civilian just tackled the suspect. The fugitive's highway chaos made this motorist late for work. But his boss won't mind the added delay. The driver is actually a San Diego police officer. Wow, they both look like they're putting cuffs on him now. This is an amazing end to a totally bizarre chase. A cop may be off the clock, but he's always on duty. The arresting officers thank their unexpected backup, then lead the suspect across the freeway, this time in custody. It took only one desperate man to turn a major metropolitan community upside down. It barely reacted. Whoa! His sidewinding escape lasted for almost an hour causing havoc on the highway and countless traffic snarls all over the South Bay. But every unexpected twist, turn, yes, back into head-on traffic, and wild misdirection eventually led to a run-in that nobody would have predicted, an arrest by an off-duty police officer. This is an amazing end to a totally bizarre chase. Amazingly, despite all the frustration for the cops and the terror for the community, this third strike psycho was only sentenced to four years in prison. 
Inverness, Florida. Alone on the beat, patrolman Jim McCall suddenly comes across a bizarre scene. A driver doing donuts on the side of the road. It could just be a joy-riding team, but the suspect's not sticking around to answer any questions. Luckily, he left a traceable map of skid marks behind him. The officer follows the treads right up to the suspect's car. A few blocks away, another officer listens to the chase over his radio. He decides to parallel the flight, just in case. McCall and the suspect head onto a wide open straightaway. The farther they get on the long patch of road, the more traffic they encounter. The officers still aren't sure why the suspect is running, but it soon becomes clear he's not just a simple joy rider. The renegade comes to a T-section. He cuts right. Then he swerves left, splashes through a puddle and rolls into a yard. McCall pulls up slowly. Suddenly, this suspected thrill jockey turns and attacks. He slams into the officer, head on. He backs up and revs the engine, ready for another strike, but before the pedal can drop, the backup officer charges in. Luckily for McCall, he was right there at the right time. Working together, the two cops rush the suspect. He guns his engines, ramming McCall's door. In a desperate situation, the police open fire on the suspect. Somehow, the suspect is able to pull away, and he heads back onto the road. Police aren't sure if the driver was hit, but his car has sustained massive damage. His ride is now a slow rolling pile of junk metal. And before long, the front tire completely disintegrates. The suspect is driving on borrowed time, and his car's ready to cash out. Finally, the bruised and battered four-door comes to a stop. McCall tries to jump out, but the earlier collisions have jammed his door. He watches helplessly as the suspect tumbles out of his window and into the woods. But the fugitive doesn't get far. Once again, backup officers were in the right place at the right time. When the suspect is caught, officers learn he was shot in the arm five times. But this lone driver proved he was dangerous and more than once. So when officers saw the chance to stop him, they didn't hesitate. Bluffton, Indiana. Sergeant Tammy Schaefer is on the trail of a suspected DUI. A plate check reveals that the driver has no criminal record whatsoever. But when the suspect sees the cruiser's lights in his mirror, he races off at twice the posted speed limit. Ahead, officers have set up a roadblock. They want the driver to know that his only option is to pull over. But the suspect either doesn't see the roadblock or he doesn't care. He doesn't even hit his brakes and slams into the parked cruiser at over 100 miles per hour. Officers are amazed to find him still alive in the crash's violent aftermath. But what puzzled police was why this seemingly law-abiding citizen was running in the first place. Officers later learned that the driver was a diagnosed schizophrenic who recently went off his medication. He believed he was running with the police. In his delusional state, he thought he was a cop chasing a drug dealer, and pursuing Officer Schaefer was his backup. I do have medical attention for you heading that way. 
Unfortunately, no one was hurt, and the driver was returned into psychiatric care. Coming up on Police Video. Our vehicle refused to stop. Their most desperate stunts become their biggest mistakes. A headstrong car thief risks his neck on the shoulder, and a drug running pawn picks on someone twice his own size. They're out of control, and they're headed your way. Next. The scene of an accident. The lesson is always the same. Every foolish decision comes with a terrible price. Camden County, Georgia. Blasting down the shoulder, screaming past Saturday commuters, this stolen Buick tears up a Georgia highway. Just minutes ago, the driver pulled away from a service station without paying. Usually an absent-minded mistake that most drivers are happy to correct. But the way this hellion chews up the asphalt, there must be more than a $20 tank of gas at stake. The officer hangs tight as they barrel into the service lane. He tries to get a read of the plates, but there's only a temporary dealer's tag, which tells him nothing about the driver's identity. All the sergeant knows is that the suspect has a full tank of gas and a full head of steam. The pursuing sergeant's siren moves traffic to the right, but the suspect again slices up the breakdown lane. Drivers don't know which way to turn. I need some help. Uh, we're running about 90 to 100. The Buick cuts off hapless drivers as it swings wildly back into the fast lane. But when the road ahead jams up, the gas thief returns to the one open avenue. The pursuing officer knows he's the only unit around. Boxing this maniac in is not an option. As the fugitive hammers down the shoulder, the sergeant makes the decision to take out the suspect by himself. If the Buick enters a vacant length of highway, and if the officer can get close enough, the sergeant can end this chase quickly. The officer squeezes more power from his engine. Moments later, the crook pulls into the clear. Topping 110, the sergeant inches closer to his target. But slower drivers ahead compel the officer to drop back, and the suspect escapes once again down the shoulder. The road's too crowded for the officer to get ahead. Every attempt is cut off by unknowing vehicles in the line of fire. The suspect sees a construction zone and tries to lure the officer into a crash. I need some help. He then desperately dodges between vehicles. Other drivers are thrown into confusion. Disaster seems imminent, but he pulls out, almost ramming the police car. In his desperate bid to gain more distance, the suspect miscalculates, but somehow manages to pull back onto the road. Pushing the speedometer to a hair-raising 120 miles an hour, every ounce his engine can muster, the officer moves in to cut the suspect off a second time. But traffic ahead again forces him to fall back. The suspect sees his familiar escape route open. He shoots for it and floors the gas. But then, the officer's worst fear comes true. The gas thief thought he could pull the same move he tried a dozen times before. But when a truck pulls aside, he skids out of control and slams into the sedan. The family of four is shaken, but thankfully, no one is injured. The officer takes the suspect into custody and confirms the civilians are okay. While assistance arrives, the sergeant interrogates the driver. Unbelievably, the stolen gas was his only reason to run. Any one of these drivers could have been the victim of this maniac's insanity. Hearing a siren, 
Most civilians will pull onto the shoulder, which is exactly where this madman tried to make his escape. For this family of four, a peaceful drive on a Saturday afternoon turned into a moment of living hell. And all for $20 worth of gas. Calhoun, Georgia. This drug dealer is wanted for a triple shooting, but he's about to meet his match. The big pickup is an ordnance enforcement vehicle, specifically chosen to patrol this major drug trafficking highway. The suspect is clearly outclassed, but he's a desperate maniac with nothing to lose. He blazes toward a blind intersection and a truck hurtling straight toward him. Miraculously, he slips through, rocketing up the on-ramp as the officers slow for the stop sign. But instead of sticking to the asphalt, the maniac blazes up the embankment, almost stalling his economy sports car. The officers are not so brash. They know they have the upper hand on the open highway, but the suspect's sporty car can outmaneuver both the burly pickup and the police cruiser. The officers realize that if the crazed man escapes onto twisting back road, he'll gain the advantage. Get forward to fast 133. So they've got to beat him on the freeway or lose him for good. Forward on I-35 still. Stuck on the interstate, the suspect pulls more insane stunts, squeezing between a semi and the guardrail to outrace the deputy. But the powerful pickup easily closes the lead and begins to pull ahead. The frustrated suspect sideswipes him, but the massive truck brushes the blow away. Unimpressed by the futile show of force, the deputy passes the pipsqueak, then returns push for shove. The drug dealer panics. He knows he won't survive this duel on the highway. He has to get off the open road and away from the pickup any way he can. I believe we're coming up on 134. But the deputy keeps pressing his own advantage, blocking the suspect and hurting him to the opposite side of the road. And six, try not to let him get off on 134. The suspect hopes his wild maneuvers will catch the deputy off guard. He dashes across all lanes, but the bulky pickup blocks his path. The drug pusher jukes left. Then right, almost clipping another vehicle. Still, the sports car can't draw the deputy away. Coming up on one, three, four. At the last second, the frantic thug lunges for the off-ramp. But his agility finally fails him. The 4x4 four four doubles back. And both officers prove who has the decisive advantage now. Get on the ground! This dangerous drug pusher thought he could run circles around the law. But even though he had a quick little car and a tank full of bravado, they just tried to wreck he found that running from the law is just plain crazy. Just ahead, on police video, criminals this clueless make police work look easy. It doesn't get more obvious than this. This isn't a car that can hide very easily. The most blatant bad guys cops have ever seen. Next. Most crooks will go out of their way to hide their criminal activity. But sometimes you get crooks who are so reckless, so brazen, or so just plain stupid that they don't care how obvious they are. Orlando, Florida. This department store surveillance video shows the ultimate power shopper. He knows exactly what he wants and where to find it. So he heads right to it. Apparently, all of these shirts come in his size. And who needs a shopping cart when you're wearing stretch pants? The greedy bargain hunter goes back for more grabbing another pile of shirts off the sale display, helping himself to another five-finger discount. 
Now that his pants are stuffed with a whole new wardrobe, the lumpy shoplifter heads for the exit, right into the hands of store security. Muskegon, Michigan. Sometimes you can spot trouble coming a mile away. This car is going 40 miles per hour in a 25 zone. But that's not all. The driver also nails a trash can, scattering litter into the street. But that's still not all. He's also grinding a groove down the middle of the road and showering sparks, lighting up the night like a flare. He's doing all this because he's too drunk to notice that he's lost something very important, his left front tire. Brookville, Ohio, and another late night traffic stop. The driver's story is typical. The troopers heard this one hundreds of times. But the trooper's instincts tell him to be on the lookout for something more. Okay. Let's come on back here and talk to you a little bit more about it. He knows that there are drunks out tonight, somewhere close by, very close. Out of nowhere, a drunken pedestrian stumbles onto the scene. Hey, you all right? I know, I want you to sit down there a second. He may think his head hurts now, but it'll hurt even worse tomorrow morning. Some guys think that they're real smooth customers, as if they can hide their crime in plain view. Other guys are so oblivious, they leave a trail behind them, plain as day. And still other guys are just plain obvious. Garden City, Georgia. The suspect in this car has something to hide. And apparently, he intends to keep it hidden. His sudden escape leaves the officer struggling to catch up. Unfortunately, the roads are soaked because of a recent rain. The officer maintains a safe speed to avoid skidding out of control. Uh, the vehicle refusing to stop. But the suspect throws caution to the wind. He charges over the slippery street. And when traffic gets in his way, he careens onto the sidewalk. The officer matches every move the driver makes, following at a safe distance. He knows in these conditions, slow and steady will win the race. Now on the straightaway, the suspect slams on the accelerator. It turns out to be his downfall. Going that fast, he couldn't hold the wet road. He tries to bail, but the officer blocks his path. That's when the officer sees why the suspect was running. He has a bag full of marijuana. The driver flew through the streets to avoid getting caught and ran straight into custody with the evidence in hand. Still to come on police video. Will they ever learn? A lazy taxi thief gets a wild driving lesson, and a polite pothead gets an eye popping surprise. Plus, a deadly drug dealer sees the fierce side of the law. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Some criminals out there are so bold and their getaways so ridiculous, it makes you think that somewhere deep inside, they just want to get caught. Los Angeles, California, carjacking capital of the world. Here on the 101 freeway, police pursue a stolen vehicle. But this isn't a typical target for a car thief's chop shop. The suspects made off with a neon green taxi cab. We're tracking him westbound, and the guy's clearly visible. This really isn't a car that can hide very easily. And so far, the only fare he's picked up is a trail of five police cars. They follow him easily. He's driving the only day glow green cab for miles around. 
the suspect takes a turn off the freeway. On to Malibu Canyon Road, where he's now absolutely the only car in sight. Seems to me this guy might be lost. It's all scrub brush and mountains for miles. On this narrow two-lane road, there are no turnoffs, with steep cliffs rising on either side. And at the bottom of the canyon, police have a welcoming party waiting. And there's no way he's going to get through that roadblock. Uh, they just have to be patient and wait for him to come. The taxi shoots straight for them like a bullet down the barrel of a gun. Having the road to himself, his mind seems to drift as he weaves across lanes. Uh, this guy's altogether too casual to believe. First he steals a taxi, now he seems to be falling asleep at the wheel. A few miles later, the suspect drifts again, and his flight from the law comes to a crashing halt. Oh, no, no, total wipeout here. He's gone into a flip, the cab is now on its roof. A terrible accident. The suspect hits the guardrail, screeches across the road, slams into the hillside and flips. Officers are amazed to find the suspect okay. Now he'll get to trade in his green taxi for the back seat of a good old black and white. This car thief couldn't seem to do anything right. First he stole the most identifiable car in town, then he took a road with no way out. And by not paying attention to his driving. Oh no, no, total wipe out here. This hapless crook literally ran himself into a stone wall. We got him. Baldwin, Georgia. It's a typical vehicle stop for Officer Eric Cook. This commuter was driving too fast in a construction zone. Immediately, the officer can sense that this man is hiding something. Okay, you step around this side. Uh, speeding? Yes, sir. I sure didn't mean to. This rig ain't got anything illegal. Guns, knives, oh. weapons, drugs, oh. contraband of any type. Take yourself. Okay. After a quick look in the cab, Officer Cook has a little heart to heart with his new buddy. Come back here to say, we need to have to have coffee. When was the last time you smoked dope? Smoked dope? Yes, sir. I've got enough right now to charge you, okay? So don't, 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 play, don't, don't play no games with me, okay? The suspect remains respectful and cooperative. Are you holding in? No, sir. You're more than welcome to check anywhere you want to. But his story stinks as bad as he does. It's clear this suspect has some very deep pockets. What are you doing? I'm trying to get this mess out of here. Then he tries a little sleight of hand. But the officer spots it, and suddenly, Mr. Manners turns into Mr. Hyde. Man, put your hands behind your back now. I ain't playing no games. What are you trying to hide from? I ain't trying to hide nothing from you. I'm trying to go to damn work. What I'm trying to do. Put your hands behind your back. Even with a full bag of pot in his hand. Right now you're under arrest for touch marijuana. What? He continues to deny everything. He even tries to call in the perfect character witness. Just get on the phone and call my mom and let her come out. I ain't gonna move. I ain't gonna go nowhere. Officer Cook starts to put the cuffs on him. Make it harder than what it is. But this overgrown mama's boy throws a full-blown tantrum. Man, come on, dude. You ain't got to do this to me. What in the hell are you doing? Officer Cook manages to call for backup. Just man, send me another unit. But some passing civilians are already there, ready to lend a helping hand. Oh, give me a favor, give me a favor. I got you. Right. Open that door on the side. With Samaritan assistance, the suspect is taken into custody. Have a seat right there. And put in his place. Give me a favor, watch him just a second. He moves, knock him down for him. Officers know that even the most routine of traffic stops. Speeding? Yes, sir. I sure didn't mean to. Can bring some unusual twists. And people who start out perfectly rational. You're more than welcome to check anywhere you want to. Can turn completely ridiculous. Instead of facing a situation like a mature adult, this man threw a childish fit. Man, come on, dude. You ain't got to do this to me. So now he gets to take a time out. Have a seat right there. In the county jail. Just ahead, 
on police video. The crooks get tricky. A teenaged rebel goes against the grain. And a cop in pursuit gets a shot out of nowhere. Just about hit me. More surprises to come. Next. When you look down from a helicopter at a long and grueling pursuit, you wonder if the crooks realize that in order to get away, they have to outrun the helicopter, the police cars, and the radio. Johnson County, Indiana. Police are in pursuit of this truck for a minor traffic violation. The teenage driver leads officers up the highway the wrong way. Very dangerous pursuit here. The crazy kid has oncoming cars swerving to get out of his path. Police race up the other side of the freeway to warn drivers of the danger. This is the last thing any driver expects to see on the freeway. We do have five officers in pursuit right now, and this guy is still not stopping. This isn't the action of someone who's running from a minor traffic violation. Police can only wonder why he's so desperate to get away. Then the kid suddenly pulls a turn, hammers across the median over opposing lanes, and into a soybean field. The rutted terrain pummels the truck's suspension, slowing the kid down. Very ruddy field out there. That's got to be shaking him up hard. But the police cruisers are stopped short, and officers are forced to fall back. The kid has a very big lead, and he's headed for the county line. There are no units waiting up there. Then he makes his way onto another highway. Having crossed the county line, the youth thinks he's gotten away scot-free. But an unmarked police car picks up the pursuit. The teen doesn't notice, and he casually lights up a cigarette. Oh, this kid is unbelievable. He's driving along casually. Then a county sheriff joins the chase. The kid now has a sheriff, an unmarked car, and a helicopter on his tail. And he still won't give up. Up ahead, an officer has stop sticks ready. The police think they have the kid cold, but he sees the sticks and swerves around. Oh, he just missed the spike strips. He did not slow down at all. At the next exit, he swerves off the highway. He skids, almost losing control, and veers toward an oncoming car. Officers seize the moment and close in. The teenager finally realizes he's outflanked and gives up. Officers have him out of the car. He is now in custody. It looks like he is now surrendering. Code 4, suspect in custody. When the officers ask why he ran, he says because of the warrants on him. The police are baffled. His record is currently clean. This juvenile offender who led police across two counties and seemed so slick, wasn't slick enough to realize he wasn't even wanted. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Police respond to reports of a speeding driver. Go get this car. 60 and a 40. But this is the suspect's lucky night. Before the officer can catch up to his vehicle, he gets a surprise from the right. A motorcycle runs a red light, nearly causing a collision. The driver panics and bolts. By the time the patrol car loops around, the biker has already gained a lot of distance. Got a DUI motorcycle running from me, northbound Lee Highway, crossing over 153. He just about hit me. The frightened suspect is drunk and outrunning the cruiser at over 90 miles an hour. He's all over the road. The officer charges ahead. As he closes the gap, the motorcyclist slows down. It looks like he might actually stop. But when the unit gets too close, the suspect panics again. He spins the agile bike around, doubling back on the cruiser. Southbound only. The officer keeps a tight tail, but the suspect anxiously tries to shake him. He starts to turn again and attempts to spin around the cruiser once more. This time, he cuts back too close. The bike can take tight curves with ease, but the cruiser is not quite as nimble. Get on the 
Fortunately, no one is hurt. You about killed me and yourself. The officer determines the man is drunk, and now it's time to face the consequences. What do I gotta do now? We're gonna go to jail. This was the driver's first time evading arrest and his first DUI. Hopefully, after being sentenced to 48 hours in lockup, a lengthy probation, and a one-year suspension of his license, these first offenses will be his last. Next on Police Videos. When faced with a madman, the cops call out the big guns. A SWAT team is called in to deal with extreme circumstances and dangerous felons because deadly force is not taken lightly by police officers. Marion County, Indiana, and a drug warrant that's about to go awry. Moments ago, the suspected Coke dealer tried to run down two officers. Now he's charging straight toward the SWAT team that was sent as backup. The officers swiftly close in and surround the vehicle. A SWAT team will be called out in high-risk warrants where the suspect is barricaded, where he's made threats against citizens or the police, or he's known to be armed and dangerous. Police feared the suspect might be heavily armed. As the undercover officers approached, the suspect made a murderous attempt to escape. It was then that SWAT Captain Benny Diggs made the decision to use deadly force. Officers approach with extreme caution. There's no telling what they'll find inside the vehicle. People get used to uh, movies and seeing bullets going through uh, cars and windows and, and uh, buildings, but the reality is that it's extremely difficult for bullets to get through cars. As the SWAT team approaches, they suddenly realize that the suspect is still alive. Incredibly, he's only sustained a gunshot wound to the arm. Then officers spot a gun within the man's reach. They swarm in, separating the man from his weapon before he can make a move. It was a terrifying few seconds of SWAT in action. And in the end, one more dangerous dealer was taken off the streets. Crime is an unpredictable foe. You never know when it will strike, whose face it will wear, or what it might take to stop it. Against an enemy this uncertain, knowledge is power. And an eye for the unexpected. Oh, God, a major collision here. May be your only defense.